open. I feel like they would really enjoy... Like, they can't... Uh, the Rubik's picked up. I think this is sort of an answer to basically the team fight power. Like, oh, they're need. like... Boris like, okay, well, we need some team fight. We don't really have a Five good option to draft here. Although they could have gone with the Sand King, actually. Sand King would have been pretty damn good. Sand King combo is amazing with Scarlet Mansion again. Really follows up with Eltime. They're like, you know what? Well, they've got their big AOE CC, so let's just steal it. Let's, let's use Rubik. And Rubik, definitely in the lane, a lot stronger than the Sand King. Sand King is very good mobile. Ganking has a good plan B. He can farm the jungle, all this business like that. But and it comes down to trading hits with supports in the lane. Not as good as a Rubik. Brewmother, the final ban here for four anchors. And yeah, we'll pick that off there. And yeah, looking at their lineup, they do not have the wave gear. Like Ruby, uh, obviously, Sky Age, amazing at harassing a lot of heroes out the lane. But one of the ones he doesn't really deal with very well, obviously, Broodmother. She just swarms with spy links. He gets very, very unhappy. Now, Secret will finalize their pick here. Off lane, Doom, look, by the looks of Faces Void, Safe Lane Farm, backed up by Ventral Spirit, Enigma. I mean, I'm looking at this lineup here from Four Anchors. They could get, if they wanted to. It's plausible they take an offensive try and just shut down Void's farm. It'll still be difficult because, they're, again, they're playing into really powerful ults like Doom, Black... Oh, yeah, just team fighters, Doom, Black Hole, Chronosphere, and Dream Coil. Ten seconds remaining. Yeah, Rubik's gonna have to work overtime. <laughs> I mean, at the very least, if he stro Five steals Chronosphere. At long, as, like, Chronosphere is probably the easiest one of these spells to steal. Steal Chronosphere, dump it down, watch Skyrath Mage Elton Titan blow people up. Like, if he lands a good Chrono, it's just a guaranteed Earth Splitter and Mystic Flare, and that will basically destroy people. Templar Assassin, though, the final pick here for four anchors, and the solar mid answer, it seems, to Puck, so probably a fan of Assassin in the safe lane. Okay, switch that over. Uh, Phantom Assassin, uh, Templar Assassin against the Puck. That's, yeah, that's pretty solid for Templar Assassin. That's not a great matchup for Puck. The silence is nice against her if you can get on top of her before she can refract, but... Puck, harassing the lane, largely relies on that so that those new kits, which Templar Assassin deals with extremely well, and she hits very easily with the Psyblades. It can be difficult for Puck. And Puck can't really out CS against the extra damage from Refraction, so this will be an interesting matchup. But of course, S4, one of the best in the business when it comes to playing Puck, so we'll see how this one turns out. But I've got to say, I feel like, I feel like it's a very solid pick. On the other hand, it's fairly... Actually, no, they, you know what? Their lineup's pretty bursty. Aside from, say, some of the dots there from Doom. Yeah, they, or if they get Eidolons on top of Templar Assassin. Yeah, their, their lineup is pretty bursty. Templar Assassin should do fairly well on this one. Anyway, so we've got the lineups here. Playing for Secret on the Radiant side. We've got Puppy playing the VS. Ah, wow, okay. Puppy playing the VS. No Tail playing the Enigma. S4 playing the Puck. Kuriko on the Doom. Oh, they'd swapped, actually. I swear it was Kuriko playing... The Faceless Void before. Anyway, so Kuriko's actually going to safe lane the Doom, it seems, and Misery has swapped over to the Faceless Void for the offlane. Interesting that uh, Puppy not actually playing the Enigma. Anyway, for the Dire team, playing for four anchors, we've got Ru Jirax playing the Rubik, Vilex playing the Templar Assassin, Boogie playing the Skyrath Mage, Trixie playing Elder Titan, please don't feed Trixie, and Matumba Man playing the Phantom Assassin. And it looks like this is going to be an offensive trial, and this is going to be rough. Indeed, this is going to be pretty difficult, actually. Kuroko does not deal, like, Doom really kind of sucks with early harass. At least he's bought a ring. He bought the ring of protection that's going to help him out, plus the shield. So he's going to be okay. If he was expecting a safe lane, like a relatively easy lane to farm, he would have been in a lot of trouble if he bought up just a lot of regen. Because no armor and no block means <laughs> the amount of harassment. This is still going to be rough, though. But from two range heroes, the amount of harassment he would take would be absolutely obnoxious. But I'm expecting Scarf Mage to come bottom, and he's going to head down bottom, and pretty much Doom is going to struggle to get a whole lot of farm because he's getting harassed out of lane very quickly by Arcane Bolts. And there's only so much to VS do. VS is going to struggle to trade hits because she's much shorter range than both the Rubik and the Scarf Mage, so it's going to be pretty damn rough. Although I say that, and Jirax is headed top. I think he's just warding, though. Oh, never mind. No, it's not going to be an offensive try. Matumba Man... I think Matumba Man's just going to assist... Actually, no, I have no idea why Matumba Man's down here. They've got Trixie and Matumba Man in the bottom line. Neither of them appear to be warding or doing any sort of that business. Maybe they're just deciding where they want to place their lanes at the moment. It's possible that they decide to move Trixie in a moment once they see what the lanes are. But the thing is... The issue with picking a jungler is, yes, you do increase your gold gain, you're tapping more sources of income for both experience and gold. The issue is, though, you weaken your lanes, and also, 
for most jung for many junglers, in fact, you weaken your ganking response as well. Couple can do very well. Obviously, you get a smoke ganking with Chen or Enchantress. You can quite easily gank a hero with the right creep. But for Enigma, not so much. He needs to get Eidolons in the right position. Eidolons are very slow. He often doesn't have any mana because he's been spamming the conversion, so he doesn't really have enough to... If he does go out for a low-level Maledict, it's... Uh, Malphus, sorry. It is generally... It eats up a lot of his mana and slows down his jungle, so he's not very active usually as a, as a ganker. And that leaves Secret with a very weak bottom lane. So if four anchors spot this, they might just try and capitalize it and try and shut him down. They could actually do it with a dual lane. I mean, they could actually just quite easily say, man, hum, man, go top, farm top, and then just dual land. Because the Scarth Mage alone is going to make life incredibly painful for these two heroes to deal with. Between the Spirit being dropped to harass from a long range, just the much longer range harass there from Scarth Mage, it's going to be very difficult. And this will actually, this will free up Rubik as well to get mobile and cause ganks. But at the same time, if Rubik comes bottom, this also means that whenever they gain some kind of advantage in the lane, they say they push them under the tower, this frees up Rubik and the Scarth Mage to go look for no tower and cause issues in the jungle. Either just at least sap experience and gold there, if they can last hit a few things out from underneath them, slow them down a bit, or even just flat out get a gank. Because, especially since Enigmas often rush the Soul Ring, they can find themselves very low and quite vulnerable to getting picked off. And Boogie, I hope, I hope you're happy, Boogie. You're making the chat right. Chat's riding hard right now. But looking at these lineups here, Void is dead. I really like it's hard. This is really hard. Like at the same time, they've got some really good carry in the form of Phantom Assassin late game. Templar is like the double Assassin's late game, plus the fact that uh, Void's not going to have much armor unless Doom is providing some bonuses. It's going to be pretty hard for Secret to meet head on. But at the same time, Secret have so much team fighting power. Like their alts are amazing. This is really hard to call. I feel like with like with execution, I feel like with the execution side of things, four anchors have a much harder game ahead of them because they have to basically get picture perfect disables down on the right targets at the right moment and focus by the right targets together. Whereas Secret's lineup is, I'm not trying to make fun of it, but it's much, much simpler. It's basically hit R, win game. Though obviously some are harder, Black Holes is much more difficult to place correctly, but at the same time, Doom this guy, place Circle with Chronosphere so it lands on enemies and not friendlies, you know, they kind of play, like, those alts sort of play themselves, in comparison. Although I say that, and then we've got alts like Phantom Assassin, which just like, <laughs> hit people until you get crits, so, in fairness, but yeah, there is that, but, you get what I mean. Just, if you throw enough alts, this, Secret have the lineup where if you throw enough alts at the wall, something's gonna stick and people are gonna fall over dead. Or at least not move for like 10 seconds. I mean, you land a Chronosphere and a Black Hole together, <laughs> like one after the other. Secret aren't going any like, four anchors won't be going anywhere particularly quickly. They'll be stuck at a lot of chain CC. They don't really have a huge counter to it either. That's probably the other issue. 30 seconds to battle. I think the main issue here is, uh oh, no tail. Gonna come out here and Trixie. Trixie runs between four heroes and avoids managing to feed. That's actually a pretty commendable effort considering Trixie's usual shenanigans. Oh boy. But he will be picking up a Sol Ring first. The question is what they're gonna do with the support, so. It looks like they're gonna have PA solo the top lane. Which, against the Void, that's definitely doable. Coming down, it's gonna come down to the RNGG, really. How many bashes does Void proc? Meanwhile, looks like Doom gonna cop some hits there. Titan will find the regeneration room. But yeah, this is gonna be a battle top worth of, you know, this is gonna be RNGG pretty hard. Does PA blur more than Void backtracks? I don't know, we'll find out. This bottom lane, no, he's actually, they are actually gonna send your axe top. So I think they figured, they've looked at the lane and said, all right, well, with the jungle in Nemo, we can probably just get away with a support Skyrath in the bottom lane, just harass the Doom out of the lane, and Doom might actually just go in jungle. Because playing a... might not even full jungle, he might just, yeah, he's just gonna grab one creep now, and then he might head... no, he's just gonna jungle flat out, which I don't blame him at all. This is an incredibly frustrating lane to play against, the long range harass from all the time, just dropping spirits in your face, and then of course, Skyrath Mage is Skyrath Mage, he's incredibly frustrating for anybody, almost anybody, let's look at this puppy already. 
so much damage. This is one arcane bolt to the face. Look, just bang, bang, puppy, just getting wrecked here. He's going to throw in the negative armor, though. Now, Boogie will have to back off here as he sees Kuriko running, Kuriko running straight at him. Meanwhile, First Blood comes out. It's four. I, what? Well, there we go. First Blood there on Valix gets cleaned up there. I'm not sure how he managed to have that happen with the refraction. Like we said, S4, one of the best in the business there. I'm not really, honestly, not sure how he managed to do that. Yeah, and he didn't even get a killer rune like a double damage or a haste or something. We'll just out playing that, but Misery now with the supports. This is going to be a hard lane for him, just getting harassed back. He's also opened up with one level there in the bash. And Kurokai might, like, he just might be better off just going to the but at the moment he doesn't really have a camp to farm as no tail is jacking one there. He's just going to take that. Meanwhile, mid lane. Puck, his bottle is coming out now, I assume. And Templar Assassins is also on the way as well. There's a refraction going up. I see how the, the, the side blade so much damage. Could get this kill. Oh, so close. He's trying to find it. Unfortunately, Puck backs off just far enough. Phylax, very close to getting a return kill there. As Puck's now going to race him to the top rune. It's going to be a double damage. This could be awkward here. No, he's deciding to back off there. It's just a lot of regeneration there for Puck. Two series of, like, basically, he would regenerate six sips worth the bottle charges. See there, five CS for Doom. It's not been a fun lane for him at all. On the plus side, at the moment, for no tell, he hasn't been attacked just yet. Soul Ring's being picked up for both the ET and the Enigma at this point in time. Misery now, oh, he's out of regen. I think he's gonna have to shuttle some out, but unfortunately the Courier is currently in use, being hogged up here by No-Tail. And poor Kuroko just can't, yeah, there's Boogie, Boogie, that's the tower. Boogie, it's a bit of a <laughs> masochist there. Takes a few hits to the face and cancels his clarity because who needs mana? Now Trixie's just trading hits there. It is pretty hard for Doom to trade hits with Trixie. Trixie, with the Astral Spirit, can just drop that on Doom and instantly just gain a huge damage boost. There's, oh wow, this farming here from No Tail. Just gonna cut down the tree so he can just clean his way through this so damn quickly. And also, putting that Midnight Pulse to work. And the Templar Assassin, as you can see, despite giving away first blood, he's pretty much neck and neck right now. Puck, bottom line, Doom actually picking off. Uh oh no, Puck, Puppy, Puppy's in trouble here, tanking a creep by Puppy. Decides he can't get away and decides just to trade as much damage as he can there in the bottom lane. Not lane now, Misery in trouble, the lift is ready to go. Misery, he's got a time walk level 2, he's going to try for the lift now. If he can pick him up and drag him back, they might be able to buy enough time to bring him down. No, Misery will manage to leap away there. Get slowed down the last second by the dagger, but we'll walk away from this alive. Now lifted up in the air, he's going to try to dump on the high ground. Unfortunately, too far away from the high ground, Jirax won't manage to get his shenanigans happening. They're going to lose this clarity now. Misery going to try and get a bash here. Has actually leveled up one of the bash, two in the leap. But unfortunately, a little bit anemic there, not able to pick anything off. It's four with a double damage. Valix, no mana right now for the refraction. This could hurt. Uh-oh. Park going to go for it. Doesn't manage to land the... If he hit him there with the illusion, it might have gone for it. And Faces Void, still no regen. At least struggling a bit here, meanwhile. Kurokai taking some harassment again from the ET. And they're going shot coming out of the stomp as well. They're going to try and set up here now. They're going to close the gap here. And here we go, they're just waiting. Trying to get in range there for Trixie to punch him once or twice. Doesn't happen though as Doom pops the Scorched Earth and we'll get away. And now Void just stealing the pool there as Jirax has decided actually he wants to do some stacking. The creep do not cooperate there. No tell though, I expected him to come under more pressure here. They decided just to focus on slowing down Doom, which is definitely happening there. 11 and 0 for Doom, definitely not finding all that much farm. 24 8 there for the ET. Oh man, that's spirit. Let's see how much damage he's going to draw back from just hitting those creep and those two heroes. Let's see, uh oh, Scarlet Mage. He brings up 64 damage though. Now Boogie now in trouble, getting dragged back in there by the Black Hole. Should be a freebie here. The secret. Unfortunately, that ward, they're not spotting the rotation from coming from the blind side, essentially. As so Notel walks in there, should be okay there because the damage is gone. Oh, she knows he's got 38 damage now. I don't think he wants to dive the tower. Trixie! Trixie is hell bent on feeding right now! 
No, he changed his mind there as he will back off. Now double traps up for TA. Puck copying some hits there. Sideblades doing the work. We see that this is the trouble that Puck has. Like the fact that Puck got that first blood is absolutely S4 is just amazing. He managed to pick that up. So you can see, despite dying, TA is up to 28 and 9. She's fought and gotten ahead of the Puck 27 and 7. Despite dying and giving away the first blood. That is actually a really, really amazing play. I don't know how he did it. I guess it, maybe it was just TA got over aggressive and messed up. Boys top lane, 8 and 0, not really finding the farming once, but pretty much Void right now. He's just looking to get a good Chronosphere off in the mid-game, seeing if they can pick up some kills there. With that, Misery... Oh, nope, just leaps away into the trees further. Did, misery... Matama Man didn't see him. I could have sworn that he would have seen him there. And Misery's just happy to leech experience. He's going to catch up on gold, just getting the assist kills later in the match. Right now... Okay, it's relatively even. I thought it would be worse than that. And Doom is ready to go. So they're going to try and pick off the TA with the Doom, and that's going to chew, even with the fraction up, that's going to chew right through it. I mean, Net and Doom, they should be able to manage this. There's a the call to slow things down. Doom comes out, Refraction goes up first, but I think they should be able to get this kill fairly easily. Moving in there. Actually, no, they're going to go for the return kill on Puck. Puck taking a lot of physical damage there. We'll be healing up though on Valix though. With the support coming in to help him out and chase them off, he will manage to ride through this Doom. Meanwhile, Boogie has opted to just hide in the trees there. Void has uh, gone bottom as well. Void's looking for a pick-off in the bottom line. E.T., though, most of his targets porting into the mid lane there to provide support for the Templar Assassin. Oh, they've found him. He is so, so dead. That's a free kill. Boogie, unfortunately, giving away another freebie there. will be picked off. And I'll let Misery take the last hit on that one to help him catch up. Now, Jirax, unfortunately, has probably given away that ward position. So you're going to see the ET. Will he go for a stomp? I don't think you can find the stomp. Kuriko is just going to back off there. Jirax moving in slow. The TA is going to get stuck in. Fade Bolt's coming in. Isn't... Oh, no. We'll clip with the heroes there. Spirit going to be drawn back in. They're going to watch for a black. No, it's 30 seconds. Oh, cool down. Angel Spirit gets punched down by the staple gun. In comes Puck. Puck going to take a return kill. Takes two there. And a double kill for no -Tail, actually. no -Tail taking the last hits. Meanwhile, Jirax in trouble. Kuroko running him down. One more auto-attack will chop him down. Four heroes dead for four anchors. Secret, on the other hand, trading two. They will lose their offlaner. But I think they're quite happy to take out both the core, the primary farmer, and the solo mid. And unfortunately, for solo <laughs> that just went horribly wrong. Puck got in there with a great burst. Absolutely nailed them. Didn't even need the Chronosphere for that. Templar Assassin, definitely better in terms of just that laning in the mid lane as well. It's just she's really good for those scrappy fights, but unfortunately that one, they just grouped up and went for it. She didn't even need to use Coil. That fight, if you got Coil down, that could have been even worse. Misery heading back up the top lane, 50 seconds on the ult. It's probably just going to sit up here, farm for 50 seconds, and then they'll look for another pick off once that ult comes up. Kuroko is going to take some more harassment there. Uh, now that actually could be worse. He's actually picked up the healing aura, so he's actually going to be able to sustain through that most likely. So the puck. The first blood and all those kills that they're racking up at the moment, he's well ahead in terms of net worth. And this could be difficult here. Although it looks like four anchors are going to try and get some objectives done here. Take down the tier one bottom. This is going to make things, you know, this is going to give them access to the jungle. At the same time, meanwhile, mid lane, there goes the core down. They're going to pop the Midnight Pulse down as well. Barlin's trying to back off Black Hole, dragging him back in. The TP will get cancelled. Realize he's going to TP inside the Black Hole. Cancels out. Void jumping forward. Another TP cancel. They really don't want to get stuck inside the Chronosphere as well. And four anchors cut their losses, which I feel is definitely the correct decision to make. They'll say, screw it, let's just get the trade the tier 1 bottom. We'll lose our tier 1 mid, we'll lose the TA as well, but had they continued porting, it would have been worse. They would have just traded away more heroes, maybe not even got that bottom tower as well. Conversion coming out there from no tower. Just going to clean up this tier 1. They could even just keep pushing on the tier 2 mid as well. And four anchors are a little wary. Oh no, no, they're actually saying TP in behind the trees. They're going to try and set up a fight. Puck is ready to go. Dream Call's not ready, but he does have a double damage rune. Actually, no, it's just wearing off. He won't have that double damage rune for the fight. They're going to sweep him from behind, maybe? Oh, boy. Void's got an invis. That should be a free kill. 
And the spirit's going to scout things out for them. She no, they walked over the trap, so they already know the trouble's coming. Radiant but the Denali comes out from Park, she'll manage to clean that up. Meanwhile, Phantom Assassin being left to her own devices for the most part, but she has managed to die once. This Templar Assassin gets jumped in the mid lane there, gets picked off. Now Puck getting chased around by Trixie. Puck actually says for decides he wants to go for it, jumps in with a silence there, but will actually no back off, doesn't jaunt out. And this is getting pretty dangerous for ET at the moment. He's staying in pretty deep. Now they don't have TP support, but at the same time, one bad smoke gang could quite easily get picked up, although they do have some vision down here, Rubik. Although Secret saw them play well, they should have seen him place that wall because he placed it while right next to Doom. So I'm surprised that they haven't actually Oh, there we go, they're pinging it, they know it's there. They're saying smoke up. Yeah, they're saying smoke up. So reveal. Oh, wow. All right, so they reveal themselves, reveal themselves backing off, then smoke up and go for it. And now Boogie. Oh, Boogie's actually hidden in the trees. He might actually get away. Oh, no, he's interrupted the smoke there, Kuroko, though. He's been seen now, and now they know he's coming. Trixie's probably going to get away here. Throws. Okay, throws it out behind him. Trixie decides he wants to stay, and he's probably going to get picked off here. I don't think Trixie's getting out of this one alive. Throws out the stop. We'll get silenced up, and Trixie. Gets picked up there, despite Boogie interrupting the smoke gang. And I mean, it was pretty obvious. He interrupted them as they came across there. Only Radiant knocked Kurokai out of it. But still pretty bleedingly obvious that the smoke gang was incoming. No tell though, trying to get a deny there. No, Phantom Assassin. Look at the last hit. In comes Doom. Doom. He throws down the stun. Doom's still on cooldown though. So you see the steel there. will be Scorched Earth. That's for now. His blink dagger is up and running. You can say four anchors have an issue here. It's going to be the fact that now the blink dagger is up. In fact, they could even go for a blink on Enigma if they wanted to because there aren't that many options to disrupt it. Disrupt this black hole. But now the blink is up. For Puck, things get really hairy for four anchors. They could even go for one on Doom as well. But the initiation power between... The Chronosphere and the Coil is incredibly powerful. And Four Anchors don't really have much of an answer to us. They're just going to pour it out from the top lane, just try and dodge these fights, which, fair enough, Four Anchors' plan, game plan here is going to be to have to dodge these fights. They're going to have to wait for Templar Assassin, as well as Phantom Assassin, to get some farm rolling, and hopefully get up to a stage where they can try and take these head-on fights. But at the moment, they're definitely not ready to do so. But unfortunately, while they're dodging these fights, they're going to be losing towers pretty rapidly. Valak's going to try and trade for a tier 1 mid. They have already taken a tier 1 bottom, but they are going to lose their top and most likely. No, the port's coming in. Chronosphere's come down. Valak's now in trouble. Ford trying to get some damage in. In comes the Doom. Puck's here as well. The damage can be stacked on Valak. He's going to take another spill. And he's up to 5 deaths now. This is not going particularly well for him. 3k gold advantage now. The blink in there. Uh, gonna swap out there. Nicely done there from Puppy. Will be dragged out again by the first splitter. No down now. Trying to give chase. Slow down by the dagger. Matama Bear copying the Malefist to the face there. Now Trixie trying to back up. Matama though gets in the corner and will be brought down. Unfortunately, going the wrong direction. As Boogie pours in, but it's too late to assist. In what bottom? I see Rubik. I'm not sure what Rubik's actually up to down at the bottom. It looks like he's actually trying to chase Doom around. I don't think he's going to be able to get much field. He's trying to stop crew at the moment. Meanwhile, Boogie though pops down a counter ward. We'll try and do some counter ward before he's picked off. Gets Dream caught up. Stomp comes in. As it looks like Jurax did manage to pick off that courier. I'm not sure how they managed to let that happen. Kuroko apparently not paying attention. Meanwhile, back up at the top lane. Steal there from Misery. He picks up Chronosphere. He's got it down. Goes the Vengeful Spirit. Now he manages to pick off the S4 inside the Chronosphere. I don't know if they got the damage. Unfortunately, the wrong side. The lift up. Will it be enough? The damage comes in from the mouth. There we go. S4 picked off. And his streak ended there. Templar Assassin going to take that streak. She'll pick up 918 gold. Now, meanwhile, bottom lane, Mask Command is activated. Going to chase Kuroko around in circles here. They're about as fast as each other. Kuroko, though, possibly in trouble. No, he's got a blink. He will manage to blink out there. Blinks a short distance and TP's out. It's actually a bit of a panic blink there. He blinked into a pathable area. I think he probably tried to get here and just got knocked over. Thousand gold for Misery. Probably going to go for his own Mask of Madness. That is definitely a pretty ballsy buy there from Templar Assassin. Like, they want the full-on burst damage to try and knock people down as fast. Like, they need to... I don't... I think it's the reasoning is sound. They need to kill certain heroes ASAP before the counter CC comes out of secret. Like they've got to land that burst damage. But at the same time, 
Yeah, you picked up a Mask of Madness against a team that can really punish you for activating because they've got so much great CC. And you've got stuff like Doom as well with Blink Dagger, you're playing against the Blink Puck. It's, it's really quite scary. It's going to take some serious finesse, finesse there from Matumba Man. Now, it looks like he's building a Scepter next. S4. Really work towards the as well. He might just do a Dagon for Burst, especially since he knows the Phantom Assassin is building a Mask of Madness. He could actually just do a Dagon. That would be incredibly painful to have to deal with that. Radiance I mean, without a BKB, if Matumba Man activates his... activates his Mask of Madness, it's quite possible that Puck just solos him in terms of Burst damage. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. But Secret gonna make another run here on the tier 1 tower top and it looks like again Forank is just going to dodge the fighters. Boogie has been sitting here for about the past two minutes. He's been a little bit worried about getting picked off as he rotates. Spirit now chasing misery around. Chrono is up. PPs are coming mid to defend. They could definitely put them to work here. It's Trixie actually going deep. He's scouting things out. I see it. Oh, time walk out there from misery. Is he actually going for a kill here on Boogie? Boogie might get sold in. Another silence comes down. Boogie's gonna go for a solo kill. Oh no he whiffs! Tries to TP out. I don't think he's getting away. We'll be burst down there. Uh, it's unfortunate. They could have got that kill, but unfortunately, whiffs. The Mystic Flare. Now, pa oh, no tail. Actually, chasing off Jirax. Jirax having to back off. And Chronosphere still up for Faceless Void. They could quite easily repel this push. Looks like they will just pick off the deny. They will just settle for the deny there on the mid tier one. And Tom Man continues to farm the enemy jungle. He's been doing that consistently for a while. But for the moment, four anchors consistently just dodging these fights. Although I say that, and then Jurak is going to walk into them. Throws down the Chronosphere, gets two. He's stunned up in return. Isn't it really made? Now, there we go. Earth Splinter are going to come in combo nicely, but they will pop the mech to heal up there. And right now, it looks like Secret have the attrition to go through. And in comes the four man Chrono for Misery. Landing the goods. Black hole to fall up. And this is the Wombo combo. Puck joins the fray. And this is going to be a four man wipe. Four anchors just getting Wombo combo down. And that's just it. You group up. And S4, and the rest is secret, they just press R to win. Oh boy. This is the danger that Forank is running into, and I mean, they look for the pick-offs. They think they have a chance to pick off, but unfortunately, they don't have the damage to dump into that Chronosphere. Without the Scarath Major, it was unfortunately stuck off in the mid lane. If they had the uh, Scarath Major, it's highly plausible that they pick off the Enigma. Before he can come out, pop the uh, me mechanism as Boogie then also dies regardless. Doom also going to take that Aegis there as well. Radiant's bottom tower is under attack. So S4, 7, 1, and 6. He is having a great game. Gonna find himself a... And we're gonna pop his invisibility. See if he decides... Is he just gonna camp? No, he just... I thought he was gonna camp the bounty rune and wait for one of the supports to come and try and pick it up. And then kill them. But no, he'll just snag the bounty rune for himself. No tail with a four staff. Decides not to get the blink dagger just yet. I mean, he could well... Wait, well justify a blink dagger at this point in time just because four anchors lack the ability to cancel it reliably they don't have something like a long range swap to deal with it and now blink in there for kurakai is going to throw another doom on trixie trixie i think is going to be okay he's just going to back off here actually maybe not that's a level two deceptive doom i think he's actually going to die here he's going to need to be denied middle tower is under attack and it's looking like he is going to need to be denied there in fact he's actually outrunning tempo assassins goes to the deny easy easy with refraction Kuro's like, yeah, whatever. I don't care. As long as somebody dies, it's all good. I haven't really seen much of an impact here for Phantom Assassin. Unfortunately, she's just spending the fights locked down and blown up. As for Yules is done, just gonna make him even more elusive and irritating to try and take down. It also gives him an option, a really good answer though to this Skyrath Mage's silence. Just allows him to get rid of that and bypass it now. Uh, are they going to go for a kill? What are they doing here? Traffic jamming the trees as they block each other off there. Looks like Phantom Assassin. No, she's just using the Mask of Mans to get around faster. She's just going to go and farm the Ancients most likely. Not being stacked for her. And four anchors again, they're just committed. Alright, well, you know what? We can't take these five on five. I mean, it's obvious. They cannot take those five on fives. There's just way too many press out to win skills. So they're going to split up, try and get their farm, dodge fights. But this may cost them some serious tower gold in a minute. 
and Trixie as well. It's also gonna cost some Trixie. <laughs> Trixie gets blown up. <gasps> Doesn't have a hope in hell there. And then, yeah, there we go. Tier 2 and Under Siege. They might be able to find a counter kill there on Puppy, but you know what? That's a really cheap support kill, so it wouldn't really mean that much at all. Thumb Man just invading the enemy jungle. We've seen three tops. Like, you know what? We can probably afford to farm this area down here, but the TP support is coming in. Puppy moving in, but Thumb Man is well. Gonna actually jump in and reveal himself there. And it looks like Forankers again, they realize the support's coming to defend this tier 2, and they're just gonna fade away and avoid fighting. See, Doom. Doom is ready. He's looking for potential kill. I mean, he could find this. Actually, no. Ports are coming in. No, Boogie. Boogie's very dead there. No way he escapes this one. They get to steal there. Did they steal Doom? He stole Doom in return. Throws it down there. And we'll be well ended up in the air there by the Yules as well. But I don't think he's getting away from this. Stomp down. Should be cleaned up very easily. Trixie gonna look for some revenge. Pops the Aegis down, though. I don't think they've got a follow-up to bring him down a second time. Meanwhile, down by the river, they will try and take a second kill here. Puck, no, they're going to leap in. Chronosphere comes in. Will they catch one? But Tumberman will be the walk away. But Violex will pay the price for this attempt to bring down S4. Enigma now, 1,300 gold in the bank. And look at this. <laughs> net worth is huge. Oh, boy. They don't even... I mean, they could go for a refresher on Doom next, but I don't think they even need to. Even Doom just going... For, I think Doom right now would be definitely well served by picking up some armor. Assault... Assault Crash for his team would be fantastic. Just because the meld right now is hitting so, so hard. Not that they had to... Not that they've really been getting pounded by the meld at the moment, but it really does do a lot of damage, so... Assault for his team would really help out. Also, attack speed Void. I don't think Void's ever complained about a free attack speed aura. Some warding, counter warding being done there. Both teams with the wards can see each other there. But now, secret, they're on the chase. They're going to try and bring down Boogie as well as Jirax. Boogie down to jump into the trees there. He's going to need to TP like right now, like yesterday. In fact, if he keeps waiting like this, he's going to be in trouble. Well, actually, no, they're going to go for this kill here. There's the Fade Bolt going to come out. And Malefet's going to go on top of Jirax. Jirax in trouble. Can they get him out of trouble? Four Staff might be able to save him. I don't think they've got one, though. Misty Claire comes in. It's on top of Puck. Can they get his kill? No, he uses himself. Tosses himself up the air. Rubik's going to go down. In comes the Black Hole. No, cancelled by the Earth Splitter. But I don't think they get a return kill. In fact, Puck, S4, he wants more blood. He's going to give chase here. Dream Coil is still available. Could go for Trixie. Trixie, is he going to TP? No, throws out the stomp. Trying to send everybody to sleep. Will be dodged there by Puck. Ducks back, realizes it's incoming, and gets back. Trixie, on the other hand, will manage to escape and walk away there. But they lose a Rubik. Doom, on the other hand, picked off on the top lane. Solo here by Matama Man. GG bashes. RNGG bashes. Does it, sell us how oh, it doesn't show us how many procced. Dyer's bottom tower is under and Doom died with Doom up. That's... <laughs> must have gotten bashed so freaking hard. Now the harassment coming out there on Misery. Misery gonna get silenced up. Can he go further in? No, we'll be four staffed out there now. The Dream Call comes down. It's on Matama Man. There we go. Midnight Pulse goes down as well. A lot of damage gonna come out there on Matama Man. Tries to slow down Big Daddy. Big Daddy, no tell. Though in trouble. Yule's top of the air to cancel the TP out. And they're gonna play stacks on on him. Boy, did die in the meantime. They did manage to run down. Big Daddy now. No tell goes down. And finally, four anchors land. A good series of kills. Two kills there. No losses in returns. Of course, I did manage to get those kills without Doom being present. He was already dead. But it is 2,700 gold swing in their favor. Much needed shot in the arm there. Puck just going to pop his runes as well. But as we can see, you know, it's a much needed shot in the arm. But <laughs> it's barely made a dent there in Secret's gold advantage. Around about 14,000. Advantage at the moment. Now Trixie is going to beat on. The, they're just going to beat on this tower. Take the tier two. I'm actually surprised they're actually taking these tier twos. These towers. And the secret has not in return. I suppose secret's not particularly good at pushing. Well, they've got the enigma. But he can only do so much in the face of getting spammed by astral spirits. I see some people complaining about the. This is like Twitch chat. You're on. You're on fire today. All right. So, the word well, we've got a lull here. The word Aegis. Aegis. Aegis is maybe a lot of people like call it. It's actually pronounced Aegis. I used to also think it was pronounced Aegis. I think Aegis sounds cooler. I think it sounds better. And I used to like basically it was a pet peeve. I used to go Malini. Malini, why do you keep saying this? Why do you keep saying Aegis? Why do you keep saying Eo? And then I actually looked it up, and discovered he was pronouncing it right. I'm like, God damn it! God damn it! Stupid sexy Malini, why are you always right? 
So as it turns out, despite the fact I may think that Aegis sounds cooler, the correct way is to pronounce it Aegis, so I do that. There's some learning for you. Anyway, back to the game. Let me roll on here. Abyssal Blade picked up by Phantom Assassin. Okay, if anything can save the day, it's RNGG Crits with an Abyssal Blade. And I mean, they need it. They need to blow up this Doom before it can get down these spells. I mean, I'll preferably also blow up the Void as well if they can. If they can blow up Void before it can Chrono, or preferably, I mean, if Void Chronos, they steal the Chrono, counter Chrono the enemy team, and then blow up the Doom before it can Doom anybody. I think four anchors have a chance, but like I mentioned earlier in the, in the cast, it comes down to like, four anchors have to play out of their minds in these five on fives, even when they're getting a lot of farm. But from this position, so, so far beyond, they have to absolutely play out of their minds to have even a hope in hell of winning this match. On the other hand, Secret have a very easy to execute lineup, comparatively speaking. It's pretty much doom that guy, throw down Chrono, don't trap teammates, trap some of your opponents, and then Black Hole should do the rest. And Void, you know, right click on people. It sort of plays itself. It's, it's much more simple <laughs> compared to the amount of work that Rubik is going to have to do. The, you know, the comboing there, he needs to get a Chrono into an Earth Splitter, into basically Templar Assassin, or Templar Assassin and Phantom Assassin blowing up a priority target. It is, it is pretty difficult in terms of coordination, but now... Oh, the smoke gank is on. They're going to walk into Templar Assassin. She jumps away into a Dream Core and a Chrono Sphere. Oh, boy. Unfortunately, for because they just set that one up for failure. That's an easy double kill there for Kurokai. He will pick that one up. I mean, it was a good attempt there for an escape from Phantom Assassin, but ironically, they would have actually been better served if she'd just run in a completely different direction. See the Solon Chrono there comes out. Earth Split are going to come through there. Will they not Kuroko drown? No, it whiffs! Oh, no, that's the worst feeling in the world. I know it too well. When you miss an easy setup like that. Now Puppy now in trouble. Should be able to pick this up. No, Puppy healed up by the mech. We'll be okay in the end. And down goes... Oh, Elder Titan just gets slammed there, and that's a five-man wipe. Four anchors will fall, take nothing in return, and Secret are all over their base. They're going to clean up a, a tier two here, maybe even a tier three as well. This tier two mid, it's not long for life. It will be cleaned up very quickly. The Eilon's already working on it, and yeah, they, I think they could pick up a tier three. Oh, maybe not, actually. They do have Glyph up. But uh, lots of pings coming. I think they're... It looks like four anchors think... That there is an enemy ward in there, but it was just pure bad luck that Matama Man walked in that smoke gank the moment he did. Radiance top tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower is under attack. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. The Kuroko that are currently sitting on... Oh boy, there's the Shiva's picked up. I mean, his team could have well done with the Socrates, but unfortunately... Well, you know what? You know what? It's fine. Shiva's actually really, really good on Doom. And it's also... It's actually really going to impact the Templar Assassin quite heavily as well. Templar Assassin is not... Uh, sort of agility... It's not sort of agility here. It normally builds on a lot of attack speed, so that negative... Effecting her is going to be fairly well compounded. Now Puppy though, got to go for a kill here. Puppy though, in trouble. In comes the Abyssal Blade on top of Misery. Misery in a lot of trouble here. We'll pop the BKB. Now he's going to go on Boogie. He decides to bring him down there. Now will he stay though? Will he back off? In comes the Earth Splitter. He will have to back off there, but he's still in po potential trouble there. He's waiting for the time leak to come and we'll zip away there. Unfortunately, oh no, wait a minute. Trixie actually surrounded by opponents here. Jirax now in trouble. We'll be caught up here. I don't think Jirax is going to manage to get through. Picks up S4, tosses him down. Doesn't land on any opponents here. In comes Matama Man into a black hole. Oh, Matama Man in trouble as Misery now going to get to work on the time man will he manage to basically will he get away with this it looks like the evasion will come through here is now no talent trouble he's getting bashed up there by the abyssal blade and they will manage to pick him off along with the void and RNGG works in four anchors favor and Doom comes in oh, Falx, Falx in trouble here S4 though decides he's not done we'll bring down Balax as he shifts away there with the Ethereal Jaunt. Now, Kurokai in trouble. He's getting jumped on here. Oh no, Matama Man. Well, Matama Man's going for it. His Doom's not there anymore. Let's go for it. Stomp comes out. We'll miss. But the Yule's there from S4. No, counter Yule's now. Will he get away? He's got Jaunt up. No, phase shifts, but he's still in a lot of trouble here. Into it. Oh, <laughs> no armor and a 1k crit there. Down goes Puck. Pays for his aggression. He does manage to get Kurokai out of trouble, though, with that Yule's. How much money is Phantom Assassin sitting on now? 3.2k. 
I mean, these scrappy fights are okay for four anchors. So they can keep just, they avoid the five on fives. They're actually going to hopefully be okay. Like we saw there, like it's a two man chrono, a one man black hole. That kind of stuff they can handle as Doom actually just goes up and solos Elder Titan. That kind of stuff they can handle. Double damage. Better assassin blinds up a double damage. Oh boy. Gonna be able to cleave through that pretty damn quickly. And it looks like Secret don't actually know this is happening. In fact, I probably wouldn't expect it to be happening. Dumb man has the advantage of having this double damage rune here. I don't think anybody's gonna go and check either. No team, in fact, having really any good vision. The Roshan pit at the moment. So four anchors kind of flying blind here. There we go. They've got a ward down now. Madam Assassin gonna get that second life there. She's probably actually gonna have to go back to base and get some mana. Madam Assassin is definitely reliant on her spells to make sure she keeps dealing that damage. This is for now. He's got the oh the Aghanims there. And that's going to be a rough one for Phantom Assassin to deal with. She's definitely vulnerable to getting picked up by that and then snapped by the swap. We mentioned this earlier at the very start of the cast. The swap with Puck is so damn good when he's got that Aghanim Scepter. Just guarantee that really good start. And they can drag the Templar Assassin or the Phantom Assassin out of position and just focus fire them down. Preferably probably the Phantom Assassin. They go for the Templar Assassin. Phantom Assassin is going to jump in afterwards. I suppose if she jumps in afterwards, then that's just a two-man chrono waiting to happen. And the priority hero is being chronoed as well, so we'll see. Gold. And Puck. Uh, is he going for a refresher? Could be. A double coil is really good, actually. With the and now Kuroka in trouble. Will be bashed up there. Abyssal Blast Trigger will go on top. Kuroka just gets obliterated. No armor for him, pretty much. Actually, no base armor. Actually, no, he's got plenty of armor there from the Sheevers, but still, a crippling blow they dealt to him. One time, man. Puppy now possibly in trouble. Gonna go for no doubt. Doesn't get a bash off. Meanwhile, counter stun thrown out by Puppy, but he's surrounded. Will be brought down. Four anchors swarming around him like a band of sharks. And Secret, the rest of Secret just cutting the losses and TPing out. Misery will go back to farm the jungle, and they already managed to get No Tail out of trouble. Which is good, considering he's carrying the gem there. As, wait, what? I'm going to assume that uh, a dagger followed him home. That was a little bit weird. Just had his Lincolns triggered. Now the dagger tossed in there. Misery actually going to BKB that. That's a very sort of chickenish <laughs> He didn't really need to BKB, but he did. Someone called Chicken, but you know what? Better safe than sorry, because they have lost to Doom already. Doom doesn't have buyback, so yeah. Better to stay safe, but unfortunately when Doom comes up, he's not going to have the BKB for Void, and it's highly possible that Void actually gets silenced up now without that BKB. If he jumps in, if he jumps in and they're precasting Ancient Seal him, he will get picked off. Now, all of a sudden, Forank is in a good position with just those pickoffs, those scrappy fights. Like, Secret's sort of walking in the enemy jungle by themselves one by one. Doom goes in by himself, gets picked off immediately by E.T. and Phantom Assassin. It's just those sort of one by one fights that Forank can still take, but the five on five still easily in Secret's favor. But as long as they can dodge the five on fives and take those scrappy fights, they're going to be hopefully okay. So, drag it back a little bit, around about probably a 13,000 gold deficit for Forank at the moment. Blink forward there from Doom. Misery though, probably building a Monkey King Bard to try and help deal with the evasion. In fact, if they really want to, I'm surprised actually Puck is not working. I mean, Double Coil is amazing, don't get me wrong. It is insanely good, but at the same time, like one of the issues they have right now is they can't get the DPS onto Phenomus. Sin, although they don't, you know, I take that back. They've got Doom. If Aghanim's Doom, they can shut down the passive, so no, that's actually not an issue. So yeah, Puck can just go for Double Coil. Easily now, Varlix got to be careful. He might walk in a three or four. He spots him up though with a trap, and he knows they're there now. And Jim will also spot that trap, and they'll just walk away from it now. Wow, but Tama Man going deep though. He's got the. Uh, no, he decides not. He's just going to go shopping and we'll back off. Scotty up for him as well now though. It's going to help deal with being kited. In fact, it's going to make it very hard to do. It also just tanks him up. Makes him a brutal tank at the moment. 2400 health plus life lifesteal. Unfortunately, I mean, he might actually decide to trade out the Mask of Madness later for a Satanic. The Satanic will really help out a lot. Although, actually, no, maybe not, because he can't use the Satanic effectively when he's being probably going to get targeted by Doom. And it's Refresher Doom too, so it's almost guaranteed there's going to be a Doom up at all times. This Ward, though, doing some really strong work. They're watching four anchors. They know exactly where they're standing. Like, you see Trixie in the trees there. They know he's skulking. And Secret, a Secret Warrior, they're spreading out. 
Radiance top Doom disjointing that dagger there. Playing risky right now in the Tum Man. Gonna have to. You know what? No, not too bad. They're just gonna use the illusion there to push as well. They've got the second life in him. He's gonna be just fine. He just is still ready to go. I don't think it's. What's it got? It's got a fair, fair while left. Puck now gonna jump forwards there, but. Borinkers are long gone. Blink dagger. Rubik's actually managed to find enough farm to get a blink dagger. This is. The mobility on Rubik is amazing. That's some of the best spells you can steal for Rubik are mobility based spells. No tell, just doing some counter warding. He's taking out the dire ward at top. They have one in the lane as well, nearby the radiant one. He's taking that out there with the gem. Oh, no, Aegis is actually gone now. Tumban didn't really find any good use for that. And he can't really buy up them. He's got to save a ball. I say that, but at the same time, he's so far behind. I don't actually think he can afford to save a buyback. Like, he sort of gets to a point where, yeah, you should get a buyback, but at the same time, when you fall far enough behind and you're really relying on a carry to save the day, it comes to the point where they just have to basically pray to, pray to God that they don't die and just buy up to make sure they're relevant in the fights and they can kill people. Because if you're too under-farm to fight effectively, okay, so you've got buyback. You die once, okay, because you couldn't fight them, and then you buy back, and then you die a second time because you still can't fight them because you don't have the items to do it with. So I think actually in this case, I mean, when you're over 10,000 gold behind, it's probably about time that your carries just go screw it and start buying up. Yeah, between Meld and this Desolator, this is definitely a problem for Doom as Elder Titan just gets picked off from the top line. This just gets jumped. Trixie, unfortunately, getting mugged. But yeah, Doom is going to struggle a bit. There's a lot of negative karma coming out of the Desolator. Dyer's top tower is under attack. And the meld hits us. Do they have an AC as well? No, they don't. They could do it with an AC. AC would be really nice. Because at the moment, it doesn't appear that anybody on Secret is actually buying one. It looks like Secret are happy to let this go for the moment. Valley's just plowing through this tower. The negative armor really doing some solid work there. They're going to back up though. They don't want to get stuck in. They know the 5-on-5 five five engagement here from Secret is incredibly strong. Four anchors will just do the chip down and say, alright, well, we got a lot of damage in. Let's just fade away. They lose their tier 2 top, but it looks like they're okay with it. As Kurokai does pick up the travels there. Puppy, oh, you could walk into this, but it looks like they're not. Franks decide not to pursue that. They don't want to make any risky plays, especially not just for Puppy. Now, if it was Doom or someone important, yeah, that's another story. They might have made a play for that. But when they can't see... Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. Faced.
killing spree. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. From the primordial plane. Gift from the goddess. А, минус у нас. Да, вот минус Темпларка, минус Алдритан, всех разложили. Все просто. Все просто. Кстати, очень четко сыграл Мизри. Он увидел, что тут и так умрет. Прыгнул сразу дальше и начал драться там вне купола. Ну, неплохо. Да, минус 5, есть байбек у Ланаи, который нет никакого смысла делать. Падает мид, падает топ, сразу же там ноутейл no э, тусуется сразу на, на низ. Надо бежать, ну, не надо бежать на низ. ГГ, ВП. И купол на своих поставил Мизери на радостях. Ну что, секреты выходят э, на лидерскую, на первую позицию в Стар Серии. Ну а For Rangers предстоит сегодня еще одна игра. Последний матч игрового дня. Будут, напомню, еще раз играть For Rangers NC Captain. Будут они играть против белорусов из Power Rangers. Ну, по расписанию, по расписанию эта игра у нас должна начинаться через 5-7 минут. Ну, посмотрим, будет оно так или опоздают нас немножко команды. В принципе, это довольно вероятно, что команды могут опоздать. В любом случае, мы с вами уходим на короткую паузу. Заваривайте себе кофеечек, наливайте себе чаечек, берите кексики или что там, что там вы пьете с чайком. И мы очень скоро вернемся. И матч между Secret и For Anchors закончился, а матч между PR и For Anchors еще впереди. Не уходите.